Inside the house, the emergency weather radio is screaming at me that in about one to two hours, my little town is going to get slammed with a severe thunderstorm. How far can we go before we get soaked? Normally, all signs would point to this being a terrible time to ride, but I often find these to be the best times to ride. Having known this KBO breeze for a little over a month and pushed it through a few situations that the bike doesn't belong in, I have a few things to add to my final review. Obviously this is just a short term review as I can't give you a long term review until I've actually owned the bike for a considerable amount of time. So you probably won't see this bike again for many months as I want to find out how it holds up in the long run and I simply can't do that unless I have a time machine. With that out of the way, in the background you're going to see a gorgeous ride through the countryside. This is a commuter bike, but I found it can handle these light gravel roads just fine. I know only a handful of my viewers are going to be able to appreciate this ride, and I don't say that to be condescending. I simply say it as, you're either into electric bikes or you're not. But add in the sound of a two-stroke in the background, and maybe you can enjoy it. The breeze, like many electric bikes, won't turn heads. You won't get noticed, people won't give you compliments and ask where you got it from. If that turns you off, then you're riding bikes for the wrong reason. There's going to be gas bike guys and electrics on both sides of the fence that are going to try and turn everything into a competition. That's not what this is about. That's <laughs> never why I ride a bike. There's something about two-wheeled vehicles that offers a certain level of freedom that's unmatched by anything else doesn't really matter what powers it, but you're literally looking at the reason why I ride bikes right now. Of course my bias tries to kick in immediately and tell you that I enjoy riding the two strokes more because it's true. They're just more fun to ride. But I'll never let my bias discredit what this bike is. It's peaceful. I've absolutely fallen in love with the sound of gravel underneath the tires. I can't hear that on the two strokes. Although they have their own sounds that are peaceful in their own way, there's something about going down these gravel trails on an electric that can't be matched by the other bikes. In my previous two videos about this bike, I've already given you my thoughts and opinions, as well as the numbers. I'm not going to do that again here, I'm going to tell you what it actually is in the real world. In a nutshell, it's exactly what they advertise on the website. They don't appear to be lying about anything. The range is fantastic, the build quality is solid, the charge time is short, and the bike does exactly what you need it to do when you need it to do it. It's been 100% trouble free the entire time I've owned it, and it's looking to stay that way. That's not to say that the KBO Breeze is perfect, but you do get what you pay for. On that note, what you pay for is a lot, and I'm not sure if this price point is the future of electric bikes. But what do I mean? Everybody's budget is different, and maybe this fits into somebody's. Well, that's true, 
but this is a piece of utilitarian equipment, not an enthusiast level piece of equipment. Unlike the Varla Eagle 1, which has the same price tag, it's a bit excessive, but it's enthusiast level equipment designed to be more fun than practical. This bike is designed just to be practical. Everything about it screams practicality. Nobody's really going to look at the KBO Breeze and buy it because they think it's going to be awesome. They're going to buy it because it does what they need it to do. And that price tag of $1,600 is just a little too high in my opinion when the other options can get pretty close to this bike's capabilities. The biggest hurdle I have to deal with is the fact that I don't have any other electric bikes to compare this to at the moment. But I've seen plenty of videos and watched a lot of reviews on other bikes in various price ranges and I can say that this wouldn't be my first pick. For me personally, if I'm going to spend over $1,000 on an electric bike, it's going to be something that's more enthusiast grade, performance oriented. For example, with the gas bikes, I have a build that's of equal price to this electric bike. My Loki build, with the Minarelli, is coming in pretty close to the $1,600 price point. But I wouldn't consider that bike to be practical, nor would I have ever considered purchasing it for a practical purpose. That bike is for fun and experimentation. The actual daily drivers that I use with the gas bikes are around the $500 to $600 price range by the end of the day. But again, we're not here to compare gas to electric because this bike has proven itself far more reliable than any of the gas bikes I own. To sum up what I'm going to call facts about the KBO Breeze, it's a fantastic bike. If you purchase one, I don't think you'll be disappointed in any way. It's just a little expensive. And I get it. Right now, good quality batteries and motors are expensive, as well as a solid built frame. So it's not that KBO is overcharging, it's just in a price bracket that I think is better suited for performance oriented bikes. If you're new to my channel, don't take this review the wrong way. I'm simply looking at this bike from my budget and my point of view. I'm a gas bike enthusiast, so I have a certain level of expectation when it comes to price, which is really my only complaint about this bike. If you're on the fence about the KBO Breeze and you've been watching a lot of videos, if you like what you see on this bike, you're going to get exactly what you expect. This is a fantastic bike. If that's your budget, then you can't go wrong and you won't be disappointed with it. I'm simply providing information that I feel is relevant towards my viewers, the majority of which are in the budget category, and something like this is just not very appealing. I'll leave a link in the description to my two first videos about this bike. One is a first impressions and the other is a range test. I mention a few minor cons and complaints about the bike in those videos, but the pros far outweigh the small gripes I have about this bike. In closing, I'll leave you with this. I have very limited experience with electric bikes, but I've reviewed hundreds of videos about various different bikes so I could get a good perspective on what I have. And if this price bracket doesn't concern you, but you're simply looking for the highest quality of practical commuter bike, I don't think you can go wrong with the KBO Breeze. And that's all I have to say about this bike. I love it, it's just not in my price point. And until next time, ride safe.